Hello dear students. Hopefully my previous lectures regarding cell wall synthesis inhibitors has helped you in understanding the mechanism of cell wall synthesis in bacteria, in understanding the classification of cell wall synthesis inhibitors to beta lactam and non beta lactam antibiotics, have also helped you in understanding the mechanism of action, the clinical uses, macrokinetics and adverse effects of penicillins, cephalosporins and carbapanins. In today's lecture, we will be talking about astronam. Astronam is one of the beta lactam antibiotics. This will be the last group of beta lactam antibiotics which we will be talking about. Previously, we have talked about penicillins, cephalosporins, carbapanins and today we will be talking about the last group of beta lactam antibiotics which is astronam. This comes under some in some of the textbooks this comes under heading of monobactams because by structure they are monobactams. For macrokinetics they are number one they are monobactam. Number two they are administered IV. As you remember in case of penicillin and cephalosporins we said that some of the drugs are administered through oral route or some of them are administered through IV route. But in case of carbapenems and here in case of astronam, you have to remember they are given only through IV route, through parenteral route. Then they are eliminated through renal tubular secretion. In case of your, you know, penicillins, all of them were excreted through glomerular filtration or renal tubular secretion except ampicillin and nephicillin. In case of cephalosporins, all of them were excreted through renal tubular secretion except, yes, cephoparazone and cephotita. In case of your carbapenems, they were excreted through your urinary route. And here, in case of your, this astronam, which is a monobactam, once again, this is excreted through renal tubular secretion. As this is eliminated through renal tubular secretion, this is the reason in case of patients with renal failure, there are increased chances of half-life prolongation. Why? Because there are chances of accumulation of the drug in the body leading to prolonged half-life of the drug. So, now mechanism of action. As we know that this is a beta-lectum antibiotic which has a beta-lectum ring in their structure. So, it has it will have a similar mechanism of action like penicillin like cephalosporins like carbapenems which is that these drugs will be bactericidal they'll bind to penicillin binding protein on present on the cell membrane number three they will block they will block transpeptidase enzyme and thus block transpeptidation and cross-linking in the cell wall synthesis and number three, they will lead to activation of autolytic enzymes. So, they are inhibitor of cell wall synthesis and they bind to a specific bind, penicillin binding protein which is penicillin binding protein 3. And by binding to this, they block what? They block transpeptidase enzyme and transpeptidation reaction and cross-linking in the synthesis of cell wall and then activation of autolytic enzymes. What are the clinical uses of estrinam? In case of our carbapenems, we said that they are broad spectrum antibiotics. That they are effective against wide range of gram positive and gram negative bacteria, including anaerobes. Here we have to remember that these drugs are only, only, only effective against gram negative aerobes only effective against gram-negative aerobes, which means they will not be effective against gram-positive organisms and they will not be effective against anaerobes. You have to remember that estrionam, which is one of the monobactams, is only effective against gram-negative aerobes and they are not effective against gram-positive organisms and they are not effective against anaerobes. Here one important thing to remember, During, when we were talking about adverse effects of penicillin, or cephalosporins or carbapenems, we talked about cross 
allergenicity cross hypersensitivity you have to remember this important thing that if the patient if the patient is suffering from a bacterial infection which is susceptible which is sensitive to your penicillins gram negative organisms which are sensitive to penicillin but we cannot use penicillin because of hypersensitivity in those patients for those gram negative organisms we can use as an alternative our estronam we will discuss it in detail when we will talking will talk about macrolides that if the organism was gram positive organism in those individuals in those patients for penicillin hypersensitive patients will be using macrolides but in case of gram negative organisms if that gram negative organism was sensitive to your penicillin but you cannot use penicillin because of hypersensitivity to penicillin for those organisms the drug of choice as an alternative drug is estronam so next that they are resistant to beta lactamases resistant to beta lactamases as we already talked about carbapenems that carbapenems are have low susceptibility to beta lactamases similarly your estronam has resistance against beta lactamases produced by klebsiella produced by pseudomonas and cerasia it means they can be effect this drug can be effective against klebsiella pseudomonas and cerasia even those klebsiella pseudomonas and cerasia which produce beta lactamase enzyme they have no activity no activity against gram positive or anaerobes they have no activity against gram positive or anaerobes so you, so you have to remember that your estronam is effective only against gram negative aerobes they are this is this drug is resistant to beta lactamases produced by klebsiella pseudomonas and cerasia and this drug is not effective against gram positive organisms or anaerobes and very important mcq or a university question that in a patient if a patient is infected by a gram negative bacteria which is sensitive to penicillins but we cannot use penicillins because of hypersensitivity against to penicillins in those patients for those gram negative bacteria we can use as an alternative drug which is estronam clear then once again because they are bactericidal aminoglycosides are bactericidal so you have to remember this that they will have a synergistic effect with aminoglycosides regarding adverse effects your estronam can cause gastrointestinal upset leading to possible super infection it can lead to vertigo which means light headedness it can lead to headache it can lead rarely to hepatotoxicity and skin rash please 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 do remember do not use any antibiotic <coughs> sorry please do not use any antibiotic without a test dose so and this is very important that all beta lactam antibiotics share cross allergenicity cross hypersensitivity except estronam except estronam so in this lecture we have talked about estronam which is one of the monobactam which is excreted through renal tubular secretion it is given through parenteral route it has mechanism of action similar to penicillins cephalosporins and carbapenems which means they are bactericidal drugs they block cell wall synthesis inhibitor inhibition and they 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 block cell wall synthesis they bind to the penicillin binding protein 3 present on the cell membrane they block transpeptidation reaction thus blocking cross linking of the cell wall and they lead to activation of autolytic enzymes they are effective only against gram negative aerobes it means they are not effective against gram positive organisms and they are not effective against gram sorry against anaerobes they are resistant to beta lactamases produced by pseudomonas klebsiella and cerasia you have to remember one important thing that 
the adverse effects related to your estrogen is GI upset, vertigo, headache, hepatotoxicity, skin rash, and very important thing to remember that all beta lactam antibiotics share cross hypersensitivity except estrogen. In the end, the previous thing which I missed right now in the summarization of the lecture is that in a patient who is having an infection by gram negative bacteria which are sensitive to penicillins but because of hypersensitivity to penicillins you are unable to use that particular drug in those patients we can use estrogen as an alternative drug by this we come to an end to the beta lactam antibiotics among the cell wall synthesis inhibitors we have talked about beta lactam antibiotics which are penicillins cephalosporins, carbapenems, and estrogenam. Why are these termed as beta-lactam antibiotics? Because they have a ring which is named as beta-lactam ring. In the upcoming lectures, we'll be talking about the other group of cell wall sensors inhibitors which is non-beta-lactam antibiotics. The drugs which will lack this beta lactam ring. Hopefully, this lecture will be helpful for you to understand the mechanism of action, pharmacokinetics, clinical spectrum, and adverse effects of estrogen. I'll be waiting for your feedback in the comment section to improve my lectures. Thank you very much.